We're gonna wait for the truck to pass by. That will be not be the last. That'll be the <laughs> one of many trucks that passes by. I'll just take pauses. Can't wait for a new studio. Boy, oh boy. All right, well, you are in for a treat. Welcome back, my friend. My name is Adrian Boisel, and you're watching the Adrian Graphics and Marketing channel. This is actually video three of a three-part series we're doing on how to get new clients. So today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about something that's very important, and that is networking. They say that your network is your net worth. I learned that at a very young age. One of my mentors taught me that, and I live by that. The people that I have in my life are the biggest reason why I am, I am where I am today. And so I'm gonna to talk to you guys about that today. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and roll right into it. All right, so welcome back guys. Again, my name is Adrian Boisel. I wanna thank you guys for watching the Adrian Graphics and Marketing channel, helping us have all the success that we've had. But today is not about me, it's about you. So make sure you subscribe to this video because I'm gonna be putting out more content similar to this that you are going to love. And I got a lot of value that I wanna to add today. So today's video, like I talked about, is about networking. And so I've been starting, I've been working and doing networking since a very young age. I learned that from my parents, from my dad. He was very outgoing. I know not everybody that's watching this, you maybe, are not the most outgoing person. But that doesn't change the fact that your networking abilities and your networking skills have to improve over the course of your entrepreneurial career. If you wanna build a business, you're gonna to have to learn how to talk to people. And you don't have to be the most outgoing guy in the world or gal in the world to be able to talk to people and share what you do. And really what networking is about is more about listening than it is talking. They say that you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You're supposed to do twice as much listening as you do talking. So when you go to meet new people, whether you go to a party, whether it's online or offline, which is very important for us to understand, and we're gonna dive into that, is you need to understand that you need to be a servant and you need to lead with a napkin, not a bib. You're not there to get something out of the relationship right out of the gate. You're just there to add value and to, to validate that person and to listen to what they care about. Once you understand what makes them tick, what makes their heart beat, what gets them out of bed every day, and what they're passionate about, that's when you can start to provide solutions, you can start to provide uh, problem solving techniques and things that are gonna help them in their life. So that's what I want you guys to walk into on the mindset of networking. But first, it's very important that you guys understand online networking and offline networking. We'll start with offline because it's simpler and it's less, less pushy. Uh, when you go to a networking event or you go to a restaurant or you go to a, a bar or you go to a club, you have an opportunity, you're surrounded by people. You have an opportunity to step outside of your comfort zone and meet new people, shake hands, make friends, and introduce yourself. But after you introduce yourself, you should be asking questions of the other person that you're having that conversation with. Hey, what is it that you do? What are your hobbies? You know, What brought you here tonight? And just getting to know them and just be genuinely interested in that person. This isn't for your gain. I want you guys to build real authentic relationships and foundational friendships that are gonna last a lifetime. Because if you're just building for, uh, relationships for your own gain to get something in the short term, those are not gonna last. And you're gonna be constantly having to hunt for new friendships, new relationships, and that's just not the way to go. So there are networking events, there are conferences, and you just gotta think, if you're gonna go to a conference with a bunch of people who are, here's a perfect example, small little networking groups like BNI and Latip, where everybody in that group is struggling and trying to fight for what little business they already have just to survive, is probably not the greatest area for you if you're an established business owner. If you're just trying to get your start and you're trying to meet people and network and get your name out there, then a small little networking group like BNI or Latip can be a good thing for you. But if you wanna be in the ring and in the arena with the seven figure players, with the big people who are making things happen, you need to be going to events that those people are at. You need to congregate in the same areas and in the same tribes of those people. If you hang out with five millionaires, you'll become the six, right? So if you wanna be part of that group and you wanna attract those type of people in your life, you need to put yourself in those situations. So Tony Robbins events and, and big conferences where people are doing motivational talks and inspirational talks and, and trainings and teachings, things like that, 
those people are hungry for growth, they're hungry for knowledge, and they're hungry for opportunity. That's my recommendation on the offline stuff. And then when we get to the online stuff, this is very important. We live in a world right now where everybody's hidden in their houses, they're not even going into the office, so that everything has really changed in a, in a major way. So with online events, there are thousands and thousands of outlets you can pick from. And I'll break them down very simply for you. First one is social media. You got Facebook, you got TikTok, you got Instagram, you got Twitter, you got all these different social platforms. And then you have platforms like YouTube. You have networks like Reddit, where a lot of the early adopters, people who are just kind of discovering things, who are ahead of the curve, who are all about finding out what's coming out first, they're on sites like Reddit. So you can go on Reddit, you can go on places like that and get the edge. And then there's forums. There's Whatever your passion is, if it's digital marketing or if it's graphic design or photography, there are forums for those people. There's a forum for digital marketers called Warrior Forum. It's a really great resource. You can go onto those forums and start building relationships online with those people. And the same principles that apply offline apply online. You need to be delivering value and be focused on delivering value to them and educating the market. My brother is a very good example of this. When he is online, whether it's in a Facebook group, which is a great opportunity, or a LinkedIn group, Every single time he does something. There's nothing on my phone. We'll be back after this brief intermission. <sighs> so my brother is very smart and what he does and something I've been modeling myself is he goes into the LinkedIn groups and into the Facebook groups and he sees people that are asking questions about a specific digital marketing trend or a social media marketing trend or an advertising topic or content writing, whatever the topic is, and he will go and chime in his opinion and his advice, which is typically pretty long-winded. Most people will just give a really short answer. He actually, his goal is to provide as much value in that post as possible. And so I've been doing the same thing. Just giving a quick little brief answer is nice, but that doesn't show that you're truly invested. You're just trying to get your name on there and share your two cents. Actually try to solve that person's problem. And then what will happen is if you're the best answer out of all the comments, that person is gonna inbox you. And next thing you know, you're gonna have to, you're gonna be able to start a, a conversation, a dialogue with that person and start to build a relationship and a connection by offering that value and continuing that on. I had a guy just the other day who was looking to get help and insight on a web development project that he was working on for the gaming industry. I don't have experience in the gaming industry, but I got a ton of experience in the web design industry so I just chimed on there say I'd love to help you there are some things you need to look out for that you don't get hosed you need to make sure that you're breaking things into phases with this project and don't just pay them all at once especially if they're overseas and so because of that he inboxed me and was like hey man this is great information I'd love to talk to you more can I show you what I have and he sent me a loom video if you don't know what loom is it's a great tool and sent me a loom video breaking down this entire project that he had and gave me the whole background of all of it so it was really neat for him to be able to share that with me and I was really excited and by the end of the conversation, he's like, dude, thank you so much for hearing me, helping me. I really appreciate your help. And now we've built a connection. There's a new connection there. So if I am good about what I do, it's going to lead me to the third part, which I'll talk about here in just a few minutes. So you got the online and the offline. There's lots of great places you can do this. Um, lots of different websites, lots of, diff lots of different forums. So just get focused on networking and building those relationships online and offline. You need, most of you need both of those, but right now, just focus on the online. Okay, so number two and the second part to this is actually understanding what that conversation is going to look like. I talked a little bit about it in this first part, but right now I wanna focus on how you pitch your business and your idea or your vision or your, your marketing service to these people. So the first thing you're gonna do, like I said, is you're gonna introduce yourself say your name, and then you're gonna ask them questions. I do not want you pitching your service or telling them what you do until that person asks you. Once you've gotten all the information out of them and you know them, then if they ask you, so what is it you do? Then you have the open door, they've put down their walls and they've given you permission to talk about yourself. But I want you to keep it limited. I don't want you to go on a 20, 30 minute rant. You need to have what they call an elevator pitch. You need to keep it very simple. One of the things that I use in my business is that, hey, I help hungry, coachable, and passionate entrepreneurs reach new levels of their business. Typically in the seven figures and the high seven figure marks, I help them with digital marketing. I help them with graphic design, branding, uh, content writing, their online presence. That is my specialty and I love doing videos. So now I've been working on my video stuff. And it's like as simple as that. 
I've got some great success stories. I helped a client just the other day. Uh, he did a testimonial for me. And I helped him make seven figures in the last 12 months. They're gonna be like, wow, and then just shut up. You don't need to go into a 10, 15 minute rant about all these different things and bore them to death. Just give them a quick synopsis. You need to have an elevator pitch of what it is, give them some facts of some things that you've done, and then tell them how you can help them. Say, hey, you know, I do branding. It sounds like you needed some help with branding and make an offer. Every conversation I have, I have either some sort of an offer like, hey, we should grab some coffee or, hey, you should check out this software. I'll just give them a few tools and resources of websites that they can check out that maybe is gonna help them solve some of their problems that don't have anything to do with me. You can help people outside of your own sphere and experience and give them some outside resources. Maybe you have a friend that's really good at windshield repair or doing something that doesn't have anything to do with your business, but you have a connection for that. So just continue to add value, help that person out genuinely and just be there for them as a resource and you watch what will happen to these relationships that you have. Now, number three is equally as important because this is where 95, probably 90 to 95% of salespeople fail and just business owners in general is the follow-up. There's a quote that said is the fortune is in the follow-up. This is where 90% of sales happen. If you don't follow up with people and you don't show after you've met them that you were actually genuinely interested in that relationship and saying, hey man, it was so great to meet you. Thank you so much for connecting with me, giving me your card, tell me about your business. And then once again, what I want you to do is regurgitate some of the highlights of that conversation so that they know even a day, a week, a month after you met them, that you actually remembered them specifically and what they shared that they cared about. That's gonna show that you actually genuinely cared about them and that you wanted to build an authentic relationship that you weren't just out for yourself. And so that's my recommendation to you is just use, sprinkle in some of the things. You don't have to go into like, you were telling me all this stuff about your life and your story and your business. Just make sure that it's focused on them and you follow up. Follow-up game is incredibly important. Most sales do not happen until like the eighth and the 12th follow-up. So you need to just remember that you're gonna have to follow up multiple times with that person and you need to just be able to make offers in each one of those situations. So make sure that you're networking online and offline. Make sure that you actually have a, a really good elevator pitch and that you're actually focused on them and just delivering value and educating your marketplace. And then number three, just make sure that you're following up with these people, that you actually care. You're inputting their information into your database, your CRM, your email marketing software, all of these things. These are all important. So I just wanted to give you guys this video. I hope you enjoyed this series. This is just some valuable stuff that is gonna help you break through, help you get more business, help you get more clients, and just help you build a better relationships. And that's what my goal is for you guys. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video and make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys, I love you, and as always, keep looking up.